Hello everybody, call me blocks. It's what we call these beautiful concrete dwellings that fit dozens if not hundreds of families on the same space which most city planners would use either as a golf course in a rich area or as a stadium parking lot in a poor area. These buildings are of course associated with the USSR and the Eastern Bloc in general. Their reputation is that they are cheap, ugly, crowded buildings that were built by the communist governments because they didn't want to spend money on building huge suburbs filled with single-family homes. And in some cases that reputation is warranted. If you compare the average 1960s Soviet apartment with the average 1960s suburban home in the US, it will look a lot worse. But that's not all that commie blocks are. There are some really good ones out there. And the shining example is my home city of Vienna. See, these are not detached grey buildings in a field somewhere. These are well-designed, modern-looking apartment complexes. Oftentimes you wouldn't even know if a building is a commie block or a privately built apartment complex. The only way to tell is by the big red letters which proudly proclaim that this building was financed and constructed by the city of Vienna in the years and then whichever year it was built in. These things have stupidly low rent. It's hard to estimate how much people pay for housing in Vienna. So the best way to compare housing prices around the world is to look at what percent of income people pay for housing. In the EU, Austria is pretty much average when it comes to housing prices. This may seem like Austria is not that great a place to live. Of course, if nobody wants to move there, then the rent is cheap. This is wrong. Vienna has been voted the most livable city in the world three times out of the last four years. In 2021, it was Auckland for some reason. And the three years before that, Vienna got second place every time. It's a great place to live. Of course, we can also look at living standards if you prefer. Austria has the third highest living standards in the EU. Only Luxembourg and Germany outrank it. Of course, Luxembourg doesn't count because they're all like billionaires or something. And Germans pay 25% more rent than Austrians. I think if you compare quality of life, living standards and rent prices, Vienna may actually be the best city in the world to live in. Now you may wonder, how's that patriotism related to the video on commie blocks? Well, let me explain. I think that part of the reason why rent is so low is that 30% of housing in Vienna is owned by the city of Vienna and they don't really have a profit incentive. And because the people of Vienna pay comparatively little for rent and it's about 20% of their income after tax, they can spend their money on other things like clothing, good food, cars and sex workers, all of which increase the standard of living and makes Vienna one of the best places to live. So how come Vienna achieved all of this? Well, it's time for history. The city of Vienna was founded in the first century by the Romans and called Vindobona. And if you tell me that this pronunciation is wrong and racist, I raise you the fact that nobody actually knows what Latin was pronounced like anymore, so uh, you're about as wrong as I am. Skipping about 1,700 years of very boring, nothing at all interesting history, we arrive in the Industrial Revolution. Suddenly, the plebeians on the field were replaced with machines, so they moved to the city of Vienna to work in the new factories. Famously, this sucked. People worked all day and, much like the rest of the world, they were put in overcrowded private workhouses. The people got pissed and threatened revolution every now and then, and the Austrian emperor first used the army to beat them up and then invented the police in 1869. This is not a joke, Vienna had no police until two years before Germany was founded. And the cops really think they're more important than doctors. Anyways, while there was a monarch ruling, the workers just had to suck it and live in apartments with high rent all of their lives. Radical new ideas were invented by guys like Karl Marx and the other one from the flag. These philosophies included the idea that maybe governments should have a say in what capitalists do. Namely, take all housing from landowners and all factories from capitalists and use them for the common good. At this time, and for some people until today, this is what socialism is. It's when the state takes over the economy. Because of this association, a lot of people who don't like socialism dislike commie blocks and won't even consider the upsides, which is unfortunate because commie blocks are objectively great even in capitalist economies. 
As history continued to move on, the Austrian Emperor decided to invade Serbia because of a turf dispute over Bosnia, which some rich kid was shot in. This turf dispute then turned into the First World War, which, long story short, ended with the people of Austria and the people of Germany rising up and overthrowing their monarchs shortly before being punished for the wars the monarchs started. The new German Republic was forced to pay for the crimes of the Kaiser, who had fucked off to the Netherlands. And Austria was straight up dismantled, which is fair enough, and then punished for the actions of the imperial family, who, you guessed it, fucked off to Switzerland. Neither Emperor nor Kaiser were ever punished for starting the First World War. After all this, the people wanted a new way. Inspired by the revolution in Russia, there were revolutionaries in Germany who were immediately killed, and revolutionaries in Austria who, in the grand tradition of Austrian political activism, decided not to rise up and just support the Social Democratic Party instead. Because of this, the Social Democrats won every single free election in Vienna since the end of the First World War. And they did what Social Democrats do. They enforced safety regulations in workplaces, they funded public transport and they built housing. In the early days, the Social Democrats wanted to slowly take over the entire capitalist economy using the state, though nowadays they just stick to housing, transportation and healthcare. So after the war, the city of Vienna began building housing. Many people came back from the war and needed places to stay. Many were disabled from the war and had little money. So, like any good socialist government, the city of Vienna gave those people priority for state-owned housing. Also, corruption. See, if you were a member of the Social Democrats, you were a lot more likely to get into their cheap social housing than your conservative uncle. Because of this, these commie blocks became hotbeds of Social Democrats, of Marxists and revolutionaries. Oftentimes, these commie blocks were named after socialists or Social Democrats. For example, the Karl Marx Hof, the longest building in the world. Eventually, the Conservative Party accused the Social Democrats of being communist and supported a fascist coup. Let me repeat, the liberal capitalist conservatives overthrew the liberal capitalist Social Democrats and installed fascism. Some of the commies did not like that and took up armed resistance. This was the start of the Austrian Civil War, which lasted four days and about a thousand people died, most of which were civilians. You see, when the Social Democrats had built their commie blocks after World War I, they decided to take one city block and build housing. See, they had a big park for kids in the middle and the flats around it, with shops on the ground floor so people could walk to stores. This courtyard centre design maximised sunlight in the flats and gave children a place to play that wasn't next to public roads. You may notice that this looks a bit like a medieval fortress, with usually only one or two ways into the yard. Clearly, the Social Democrats agree, because when the coup happened, the people in the Karl Marx Hof decided to fight. Because fascists are cowards, they were too scared to storm the place or starve them out, so they just shared the social housing in the middle of the city with military artillery because there were like 50 armed rebels inside. Hundreds of civilians died. After the four-day civil war, the fascist government decided that social housing is dumb, and stopped building any. And within four years, the Austro-Fascist government was, of course, made redundant because Austria became a part of fascist Germany, which likewise didn't like poor people and built no social housing. After the war and one decade of Allied Soviet occupation, Vienna was finally able to have free elections again, and they voted in Social Democrats, who promptly looked at the city of Vienna and said, damn, those Lancaster crews sure leveled half the place. You see, because of the unrestricted bombing of civilian cities during World War II, Vienna had lots of space to build things, and a lot of homeless and unemployed people. So the Social Democrats did what they do best and built commie blocks all over the city. Nowadays, 30% of Vienna is social housing owned by the government. So if it wasn't for all those uh, bloodthirsty, child-murdering, allied war criminal bomber crews, Vienna would surely have about 7% higher rent right now. Thank you, Allied forces, for liberating our city from existence. So, let's say you move to Vienna and want one of those nice government flats. They have many benefits. For example, they cannot evict you. If you pay, it's your place, as long as you can pay. Rent increases are a lot more rare with these flats, and they're generally built very convenient to public transport. 
which is not saying a lot because this is the map of Vienna's public transport and I genuinely think you would be hard pressed to find a place that's more than 10 minutes from a tram stop. But how do you get the flat? Well, that part's harder. On the free market, which still makes up about 70% of the housing in the city, like this flat here, all you need is a landlord who will accept you, uh, so you have to have proof of income and you have to be a legal resident of the EU and you can just move in. Not so for social housing. First of all, to be eligible, you need to be an Austrian citizen or equivalent. This means you're either from Austria or an EU country or you have the citizenship of any of these places and then you're good. If you're a refugee and you get refugee status within the EU, you also theoretically get a place. Except not, because you can only get the flat if you've already lived in the city of Vienna for at least two years. As someone from Lower Austria, I must assume that this is because the people of Vienna just really hate me individually. If you're a citizen and lived in Vienna, you just need to be over 17 and you almost got the criteria for filling in the application to join the waiting list. But you also can't make more than a certain amount of money in a year. That money is 50,000 euro, which is about 10% above the average income. So I estimate that about 60% of Vienna would fulfill this criteria. So if you are over 17 and a citizen of an EU country or equivalent, you've lived in Vienna for at least two years and you aren't in the top 40% of earners, then you can get on the waiting list, which is not a real waiting list. It's not first come first serve as you would assume. It's a bit smarter than that. They consider your living situation. If you're scheduled to be evicted from a privately rented apartment in a few months, or you're 17 years old and you're fleeing an abusive household, for example, you will get a flat a lot faster. If on the other hand, you just moved to Vienna two years ago, or you make 50K a year, uh, you may have to wait for a very long time. Of course, the most common criticism the people of Vienna have of the social housing system is that once you have the flat, you keep it. See, right now I project to make about 30,000 euro a year. Had I been living here for a while, I could get social housing, if any frees up. But if I then suddenly release the Wikicoin NFT and make 2 million a year, they won't kick me out. Once you have the flat, you have it, even if you don't need it anymore. The idea is not to kick people out of the family home for getting better jobs. The politicians don't really want to disincentivize success. The downside is that people who are genuinely in need and can't afford private housing may not get a place. In total, social housing makes Vienna one of the cheapest places to live. This is because private flats still have to compete with the cheap social housing. This low rent allows people to spend more on things that make them happy, which makes the city more livable and increases the standard of living. This is also a good thing when it comes to homelessness. In a city of 2 million, Vienna only has 1,000 homeless people at any given time. By comparison, places in the civilized West, like I don't know, New York and Washington DC, have 20 times more homeless people proportional to population. Even Chicago, which has the lowest homelessness of any major US city, has four times more homeless than Vienna. And we don't even need anti-homeless spikes to keep them away. So naturally I started digging and it turns out those 1000 people in Austria who are homeless, they have options. They could get government assistance and free shelter, but they don't. See, when I heard Ronald Reagan say that some people are homeless by choice, I just assumed that it was his dementia talking. But it seems that there are homeless people in Vienna that may actually not be using the assistance they're entitled to. From my cursory research, it seems that some homeless people elect not to take charity for moral reasons because they feel like they need to help themselves or some bullshit like that. And some don't take charity because they're ashamed to. 30% of the homeless in Vienna say that they didn't properly manage their own money, which has to be hard to admit to a complete stranger in a homeless shelter, which I guess is why they won't seek out help. That being said, Vienna is as close to no homelessness as any city can legitimately be. And at the same time, it has some of the highest living standards and happiness rates in the world. I know as socialists, we obviously want to abolish the housing market and turn mansions into soup kitchens. But in the meantime, you may consider voting for the people who want to build social housing. 
even if you already have a place. It's going to drive down the rent for you and everyone else. Oh, and also, you know, end homelessness. But of course, there's much pushback against social housing. Lower rent may be great for 90% of people, but remember that there are 10% of people who own 80% of the living space. And they will definitely lobby and go on the news and so on and talk about how hard being a landlord is. So maybe in addition to tactically supporting social democrats, you could also go ahead and build a guillotine. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, this could or could not be the start of a new series about socialist city planning. There are a lot of channels like Adam Something and Not Just Bikes out there, which make videos about how we can improve cities by making them less car centric. And I got many requests for stuff like that from a more leftist point of view. So let me know if you want to know more about this kind of stuff. Uh, I have a lot to say about how trams are the superior mode of transport for almost any distance and why we should ban all cars, even electric ones. Leave a comment if you want to hear that rant. Thank you for watching. Please excuse the rocky upload schedule. Um, I'm still coming to grips with my new side job, though it does pay very well. Thank you to all my supporters, and especially Liam S, Nanith Hema, Alan Vo, Eric Betts, Lily Lawlett, Tusnek, Broccoli Robbery, Carissa, Dominic Cusanelli, Emily Margot Classen, Even Bermel, Kevin Sanders, Classroom, Lazy Panda 234, Luke Stahl, Ramon Deville, Red Shock Trooper, Sarah, Stair Master Chef, The Swiss Femboy, Theon Gillian Jr., Travis, and Theon Leia Hartley.